Morning, church. Yeah, last night, la. You know, you put a lot of stress on us up here. I'll be talking with Dati. I don't want to go and change this to a transparent system. I prefer the wooden one. So that our legs shake, huh? we all couldn't see. Now you all could see everything, you see. Okay, morning. I think uh, this morning when you see the song, uh, when you hear the songs, Waymaker, uh, the goodness of God, I purposely ask Victor to choose that because when you come on Sunday, you know that you only hear a few type of messages. La. One is the faith-building messages. Okay? And you want to hear faith-building messages, you don't miss up now, okay? Like I say, when she preached, even the ground move. Okay? When come to faith. Okay? But today, I'm not going to that. But it's just that it's very important to build the faith through the word to internalize. Okay? To strengthen ourselves up. Okay? Why ask to choose these two songs? Because every time when before I sleep, or most of the time when I face challenges, don't know what to do, Sometimes you pray and God didn't answer you. You know what I mean? So, I always listen to these two worship songs to strengthen myself up, you know, to sing along. That's why if you attend the cell group I'm handling uh, on Saturday, our theme song is always the goodness of God. You see? So, so it's easy. So, Victor, who always come to help us, just only have to choose another song. It's very important. Okay? But knowing that for some of you, who have still not come to accept Christ as your true Saviour, I urge you today that you are here not by accident. Okay? It's God's divine purpose. Okay? Because I reflect myself years ago that from the year 2000 to when my wife accepted the Lord. I know my wife accepted the Lord. I, I don't know. Uh, the year 19, for 10 years, I used to send her and the children only to the church and off I go to the golf course. You see? But then one day, I am just decided after 10 years, I say that I'm going to search who is this God. And for one year, I came to church. I came to church and I really searched. And that's where that I find, I really tasted how good God is. For He is a promise keeper like the song says. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. And he's a light in the, in the darkness. But most importantly, I want to urge you, for those who have not accepted, the last worship song, which I didn't ask Victor to sing, Living Hope. The lyrics, the meaning is there. Why? You know, why we should come to accept the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, why we should come to accept the Lord Jesus Christ? So from then onwards, know what Christ did on the cross, then you know that there is no you turn back. You see, there is no you turn back. That is who our God is. So I urge you, for those who are not accepted, come. Come and taste the goodness of God. Come and taste the goodness of God. Okay? So today my message is always about teaching on our walk with God, whether it's mental, our desires, our our desires, our thoughts and everything all. And that I find is very important. Okay, so I titled the talk, Imme Take Immediate Action. A lot of us used to attend a lot of talks, attend a lot of Bible study, but we never put that into action. No. Sometimes maybe it's difficult. Like you, they ask you to go and rebuild, you know, uh, go, go against the darkness. I mean, you don't know how. But the talk that I'm going to give is very simple that you can take immediate action. The only challenge is that whether do you want to make that decision. Very important, you see? Because in our walk, sometimes we just go through daily without examining, you know, whether our walk can be improved to glorify God or not, you see? So if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, Shalom, and she tell you that if you have TIA, it's not a good news, okay? It's a minor stroke, okay? Am I right? You see? TIA is a minor stroke. So, but today, it's going to be a good news if when you take this immediate action. And I believe that the objective of this, that eventually your work will glorify God. You will, you, you have more friends than enemies, okay? You have more friends than enemies. Eventually, you will stay devoted to God, 
He will stay devoted to God with an undivided heart, like what Dr. Paul shared last week. And I think all of us, we want to make sure that we finish our race well. Right? Okay, you all look very serious. Let me just tell you a joke first. Okay. Okay, there was this lady, you see. She was, uh, she was divorced twice. And they asked her why. She said, the first man always beat me. Then she said, oh, but the second man, she left me. Uh, he left me. So he said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to put in the advertisement. I said, I'm looking for a spouse that won't beat me, that won't run away from me. So he said, what is the third condition? That he will love me double of what I love him. Okay, and true enough, a lot came, a lot she rejected. So one day, there was a knock on the door. And when she opened the door, she could not even see the man. And the man was on the ground. Okay? And she said, why? You have no hands and no legs. How can I marry you? She said, you can. You put the advertisement that you don't want a man that beat you. I don't have no hands. I cannot beat you. <laughs> and I have no legs. I cannot run away. <laughs> right? I fulfill too. He said, what about the third one? He said, now this is my medical report. Doctor said, I have two hearts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you see, be careful of what you really want. What you really want, what you really desire. So sometimes it will come to pass. Okay, it will come to pass. What be careful. Whether you want to come to church on time, you have to decide. Whether you want to serve, you have to decide. Whether you want to internalize, you have to decide. Or whether you say, hey, I got a problem, I run to my cell group leader, I run to the pastor, I run. Oh, now we don't have pastor. Huh? <laughs> okay, I said Pastor Victor. You know, you have to decide. Or you say, no, I want to internalize myself and come out in myself. You have to decide all this. Okay? So that's why I title it, Take Immediate Action. So you see, I think all of us know that the cross, we always have to get right with God. I will share on it later. And the now important thing is that I think our walk that we want to make sure that we walk right, get right with men too. You see? And it was very timely. Last week, I, me and my wife have lunch with this this couple, that we've been trying for years to get them to the Lord, and they managed to come early this year. Uh, they couldn't attend our church because they attended, also distance, and they attend on a Saturday night. So last Sunday, we have lunch with them, and first thing, the wife especially told me, wow, you say, uh, I say, after seven months, oh, how your walk, uh, how do you find the church? Uh, now she say, oh, I find why the people behave here like that one, uh. <laughs> so she start to she start to complain a bit lah. Uh, why the people behavior, people action no? Okay. So then I told her, I say, welcome to the real church. <laughs> welcome to reality. Okay. First thing, I say three things that when you go through this, I, I didn't agree with her, you say, uh, what she told me. Well, I didn't want to check. I say whether it's her. It could be their fault or it could be the leader's fault or the member's fault. But I told her three things. First thing, the church is not perfect. I told her. Second thing, I said, maybe God used this experience to strengthen you internally. Maybe you have to change from internally to, you know, to face it. I said, the third thing, maybe God want you to pray for the start to learn to pray for the person. For the people that who you find that open and inverted comma hurts you. Maybe I say that is God's plans for you. You see, I, I was telling her that, this couple. But I say most importantly, when we come to become a Christian, our walk, we always look at the cross. We always look at the cross. Focus on Jesus, I say. Then you say that's where your overcoming strength will be there. You see, that's what I told them. So welcome to the real, you know, sometimes it's reality in church that no one is perfect. But most importantly, for us who are children of God, who are Christians, that we accepted Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, forgiven of our sins by God through Jesus. So that's why then we should walk on this earth that with a changed heart, right? We should walk with a changed heart. We cannot be the same all the time. 
We must not be the same. That's why Paul always said when we take the Holy Communion, no doubt he keep what he came the always the word, examine yourself. Maybe that one in the context is examine yourself in the faith in Christ. But to me, I'd like to take it literally. What are the areas of life that we have to keep, keep examining ourselves so that our walk, our walk now will glorify God as we keep improving? We cannot be perfect. We understand that. You know, we cannot be perfect because also why the Bible always teaches that when we are wrong, always correct us and also teaches us what to do right. Okay? So that's where, even as a Christians, I want to tell you that all of us, all of us have responsibility. Huh? All of us have responsibility. We have a choice. But whatever things that we do, our actions, our words and everything, all carry some responsibility. So you see that in this case, that's why I say that we are all responsible for our thoughts our behaviour and our actions, whether verbal or non-verbal. Then we have to uphold the responsibilities that you have been given or you volunteer for. We have to. Because everything is washed, is washed by the Lord. You see? After I give you the scripture. So you see, so from now that with this, I hope that after this talk today, that you'll be more aware. Lah, huh? That's all. Don't condemn yourself. Because we are all not perfect. All of us still make mistakes. Okay? We're all in the process of sanctification. So we are not perfect. So as we keep examining ourselves, then you will realize that your walk with the Lord, eventually you will have more friends whether it's with the strangers or with your brothers and sisters or with your relatives. Or, you see? So the first one that I always want to go in is very big area huh, is ignorance. Okay? And one of Satan's basic tactic is always huh, to cut us from God. Okay? And I think you all are very familiar with this word in Hosea. My people perish because of lack of knowledge okay but that one uh, in biblical sense is related to the knowledge of getting to know the true god but literally we can use it sometimes we have the knowledge but we don't know how to apply it we don't know how to use it at the correct time you see so why so i think this these words came in Isaiah 45 that come gather together draw near you fugitives from the nations. Ignorant are those who carry idols of wood and pray to a God that cannot save. Okay, it was in this context that in chapter 45, Isaiah, God used King Cyrus. He's a pagan king. And he used to set those children of Israel free from the Babylonian captivity. And these people, they came back. They came back. And they came back, you know what happened? they will bring back all those beliefs uh, that they were in captivity. You see? And all those people, they went to pagan worship. You know? Pagan worship. So they, so they were brought back. And I think some of them start to practice that. And I believe that even some of the residents of that nation who are not Jewish, who are not God's children, they also follow these people back. I believe so. You know? So they also carry all these deep cultural beliefs. You know, rooted practices that that are not that contradict God's words. Okay, and it's the same with us. No, most of us were raised up in a non-Christian family. Am I right? When we came to church, when we accepted Christ, we still bring along. No, we still bring along certain beliefs. We can be coming to church to attend seminar, to accept Jesus Christ, take the Holy Communion. But when we go back, we still look at the calligraphy, we still look at the stone that we bought from Korea, and that is the source of our hope at length. I came across, I was surprised when I went to my friend's place, 
I said, hey, you are Christian? I said, why is this stone? Oh, this stone I bought from Korea. It brings lux. <laughs> no. You see, they still believe in certain things, no? They treat that like a god, no? I mean, I said, are you sure it can save you uh, from your challenges? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or it's more of a psychological thing, you see? And certain people that I went with this friend to Shanghai, okay? And I told him not to get the calligraphy. You know, calligraphy, sometimes you go and visit, the, the man asks for your name and you write a calligraphy. You see? And he still kept it. I said, no, I say to you, I say that, you know, we can, I cannot accept. You see? So it's very important that we will make sure that sometimes we accepted Christ. That what are we bringing in into our home? What do we have here? Is the, you see? Because we, are, we have all these deep-rooted cultural uh, uh, beliefs, prejudice, okay? And certain religious at, uh, attitudes that we have because from young. So first thing, take note of that. Take an immediate action. Go back. Search yourself, okay? That what do you really believe in? Is it Jesus the only true source? Or are there any other source? Very important. And some people even look towards men. That's even worse. Okay? Even though they become Christian. So that is not acceptable. And the other one, I think another big area that I want to talk about is, I think you all know, huh? uh, those are in healing and deliverance always talk about this. And forgiveness. Okay? Unforgiveness can come in many forms. No? Eventually, if you have this in, in you a bitterness about the certain people or this church, you have certain hatred, okay? Until you, until, uh, you, you start to have these symptoms, no? you withdraw. You withdraw. The church say, come, let's Bible study. No need. La. Ah, let's breakfast. What for? La? These people are all hypocrite. You know what I mean? You see, you start to withdraw. Uh, that is a symptom. Some of you become very silent. Very silent. Everything also don't want to answer. Okay? Some become very rebellious. Okay? Some people become very rebellious. Everything the church wants to do, they rebel. You know? So to me, I treat that that is sometimes is the symptom of uh, unforgiveness. I still remember that when Dato became a minister for those who were here eight years ago, oh, we have a hell of a time. <laughs> a lot of members were not happy. Were not happy. But sometimes he used the platform to speak, which I told him not to. <laughs> you know what I mean? He said, a lot not happy. Then he asked me, how can you accept? I said, I cannot accept certain things that Dato talk. But I said, we are from the same church. We are all working together for the kingdom of God. You see? For me, Christ comes first. You see? For me, Christ comes first. What Christ will and purpose using this church to be a light and salt comes first. I say, He is man. And you know, some of them, last time we don't have digital. Lah. So when they heard, lah, then they come out, oh, today we're preaching, Dato, they went home. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff came to know next week he's preaching, I don't want to attend. I don't want to attend. I mean, it's a fact, you know. You can check with a few. <laughs> we have a hard time, I tell you, as an elder then, you know. And then maybe, and the time when Pastor Peter Ting gathered to pray for Berse, that was against Berse, <laughs> you know. We have a hard time, you see. We are in conflict. We beg to defer. But then, like I say again, we work together for his Say, you know what I mean? You see? It's very important. Then on the... Okay, here's the politician. Maybe you talk such a high level, we don't face it. But I tell you, there was this girl in my previous church. When I first went to the church, he was a full-time worker. After two years, he stopped working. Okay, never mind. So after one, two years, what? Then I began to notice her. She was only early 20s. And I asked my cell group leader, how come we never invite her to our cell group? She said, I invited, but she refused to come. It's a withdrawal symptom. She remained silent. 
So one day I told my wife, let's, let's approach her. Lah. Uh, I said, let's bring her for dinner. So we talked. Then she began to talk about how she was open and inverted comma as a full-time staff. She was ill-treated, not paid enough, you know, you know all these things. Lah. So we listened. But I told her, I said, no matter what you face, you were, you, you were right. I said, I don't want to check into it. But I said, don't let the devil win. I said, the devil laughs no, when you behave in such a way. I said, you are made of substance. What you went through, I told her. What you went through, now you work in the corporate world. Lah. I said, the challenges there are not as worse as what you face in church. She said, yes. She said, yes. She said, what I face outside with people, nothing. Lah. You know what I mean? You see? She told me that. So I said, then you come back. You come back to the cell group first. You come back. And she came back. And we came back. So then we started to talk to her in a, in a very, in a way of mystery. And I told her, I tell you, on the wedding day, uh, on the wedding, she asked me and my wife, I said, no, to show your open and very unforgiveness. Lah. I said, have it in the same church. Have it in the same church. Have it. I say, get the pastor to surround your marriage. You know, she asked me, because you know what I can tell her? She want me to give her away as a bride. Because the father still cannot forgive. <laughs> the father didn't want to come to attend the wedding ceremony in church. You see? So she asked me, and I give her away. So you see, and today she, I tell she's doing very successful. You know, because what he, she experienced, uh, I tell you, in the corporate world, what challenges with humans uh, is nothing to her. Uh, you know what I mean? It's what she told me. So, brothers and sisters, that's why I say it's very important that we have to make a decision. Okay? So, if you are... Uh, I still hear some of you all. Huh? I still heard, oh, if this person go on this uh, ministry, I don't want to join. Cannot, lah, brothers and sisters. Okay? <laughs> cannot. You have... Cannot. You have to make... This sort of thing I won't accept. Okay? Yeah, it's contrary to God's word. Well, God's word is say, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and sender, along with every form of malice. Malice, you see. So we have to we have to be conscious of that. So I still heard, oh no, 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 the fellow there, I don't want to go. I don't want to join. Cannot. If God call you, you join. If God put the design in your heart, you go. You go and serve that ministry. Whether your greatest enemy is there or not. God will strengthen you. Trust me. God will strengthen you. you know, I face that in the mission field. You know, when the next trip I sign uh, in ICM, oh, I say the fellow going, uh, I, I don't like him. You know, well, in the first trip, I have a hell of time with him. He was taking the same room with me. You see? You know? And I become demoralized after joining a trip at times. You see, but then he went again. And after that, God gave me the strength to overcome that. You see? So it's very important because you have to deal with it. We men are not perfect. Deal with it. If you don't deal with it, everywhere you go, uh, you will find yourself in such a situation. You will find. Trust me. Okay? You will find such a situation. That's why it's very important. You don't deal with it. It's same like in a, whether you're traveling in the group with a non-Christian, your friend, or uh, I experienced that because I used to bring people, group, to go traveling together. Same issue arise. Same issue. And I have to counsel them. You see? So you see, it's the same thing. Everybody, so I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, you want to glorify God. You are a Christian. You are a children of God. Okay? You have to get rid of this. Very important. You know, I dare to say that my wife not here, okay? My wife just cannot tahan this sister in Australia. <laughs> you know? And but every time she cannot tahan, I will call my sister to talk to her. <laughs> to show her that we have to still love her. Still love her. Because her degree, I tell you, from 1 out of 10 now is 9 out of 10. <laughs> yes, I tell you that. You see, so in 9 or 10, you just cannot tahan, but then I say you have to love her. We have to love her in a way. 
Not easy, but God will give the strength. Another area that I want to talk on is uh, food. This one is what? Even when a fool, when he keeps silent, he counted wise. When he shuts his lips, he is thought to be discerning. Except the one whose faith is weak without quarrelling over disputable matters. I see some of you all argue with another Christian. So. Argue, want to win. I have to accept that some people are weaker. I huh? have to accept some people are weaker. That's it. You know, that's why in the mission field they say, how can you bring this person along to the mission field? You know, I say some people are just weak. La. So we just have to help them or help her more. You see, so sometimes she just think, do foolish things that, that you cannot understand. Why? Because I'm just talking the next big area is foolishness. Okay? Foolishness actually is not, not aware. No. In fact, God always say, trade your change your ignorance for wisdom. God always say that. Okay? And one of the areas is beside argument. You know, sometimes uh, I, I'm very blessed. Lah, huh? that I think most of you are blessed. We are blessed with a lot of knowledge because we went to varsity, we went to this Bible school. Blah, blah, nah? We are blessed with more skills. You know, some of us came from the corporate world. We were trained. Now some of us were blessed with more finances. Okay? And some of us were blessed with more successes, more experience. Okay? But you know what happened? Sometimes uh, when we are blessed with more, uh, we forgot that pride sometimes came in a bit. No? Came in, we forgot, we forgot to realize that. Okay? So we tend to talk, we tend to talk that we are only right. That ours is the best. Maybe you are right, you are the best. But understand, when you want to make, you want to bring people to the kingdom. Okay? You can win your point, but you lose a friend. Correct? You lose a friend. So sometimes, we have to be very careful. Do you know some people, I'm sure you have, non-Christian, Christian, when you talk about property, you talk about shares, the way or he or she talk about that is the best. The property she buy. She make the most money. And you buy, you make the least money. The share she bought is the best. Never lose one. And when you bought, the share you lost. She will tell you why it's so stupid and all that. Do you come across that people? Do you come across or not? Okay. You come across it. And can you imagine if we are, Do you like the person eventually? You won't like. Even though he's right, right? Even though he's right. And I got this friend. Christian friend. And I brought him. He is... 60 plus at the time, I was, I was a young 40s. Okay? He's very rich. He's fed his dog huh, with organic chicken. No? Wow! We say, organic chicken. We say Kentucky Fried Chicken cannot, cannot. Not organic. Organic chicken. Very rich. Yeah? But he contributed a lot also. That's a good thing. But you know what happened? He's all into health food. When I brought him to Indonesia, Pekan Baru. Huh? Pekan Baru. You know, so I gather a few. Always, for me, after the last trip, those who follow me, I know I will gather all the people who work for the Lord. I want to give them a nice dinner. That's the only time they have a nice dinner. Lah. Like Indonesia, I think they were experienced Billy who we give them a nice dinner, remember, on top of the hotel rooftop. You know, we give them a nice dinner. And this friend will come and tell them, hey, don't eat too much rice, not healthy. <laughs> don't take don't take juices a lot of sugar <laughs> so I will pull him aside I say you cannot do that these people cannot afford like you do you know what I mean you cannot afford like you do you see I will pull him aside I say let them enjoy you see I say the Lord the Lord make the rich the Lord make the poor doesn't mean that people who are poor, they don't live on organic food, they cannot live longer than us. Correct? I've been to India, I've been to Bangladesh, I've been to everywhere in Nepal. And I see, I told my wife, look at some of the child there, without nothing, look at their eyes. So bright and nice. And our grandson all oh, got vitamin C, got this and that, come back with a red eye. <laughs> right? Correct? You see? 
we why tell me see with everything oh come back with red eye come back with cough we always say why are you like that oh? you have everything you know <laughs> you see it's like that so you see everything is all the lord is at the lord's field see the lord make the rich and the lord make the poor so we cannot go and tell if you want to stick on to your what water i agree no go ahead but you cannot bring that wow, the water there very dirty lah. Where they got money to buy water filter? Like you, Kangen, cost how much now? Six thousand dollars, I think. How do I afford? Even some of the people here also cannot afford, right? You see? So let's be considerate in expressing our opinion. You know, you know the person after mixing with you, uh, he or she will leave, <laughs> will leave you feeling more depressed. No? That you know. Ayo, why I do? Why Lord never bless me with money to buy this water filter? So it's very important that we have to be very careful, you know. So they, he, he used that in a mission trip, and one day he was crazy with L arginine. You know the supplement? You can buy it from GNC. GNC, yeah, uh, is for your heart. Wow, well, he became crazy that when we took him to Chiang Mai uh, for a conference, after the speaker finished all, uh, well, he asked the group to sit down and he distribute papers about l arginine I told him, cannot. <laughs> I think people are all missionary in Mozambique or where they got money to buy. And then you come out and buy for them. Lah. You know, he go and do pamphlets. He get telling that why this is good for your heart. You see? So some people, they have more money, they have more everything. Or, but he forgot that the general, what about the general crowd there? That's why whatever knowledge we have to use, we have to use it at the correct place, at the correct time, at the correct, to the correct people. Correct? Just like in the mission work, we always say, always have the right strategy at the correct place. Not one strategy can work for everything. Okay? And the other one is overzealous. Some people are too enthusiastic. Okay? When they see somebody new come to the church, well, they pressure him or her until they want to accept Jesus Christ. Until the blood run. Okay, <laughs> correct? Yeah, I have experienced before. Hey, I said, why don't you go back to church? Hey, I did not go already. Lah. You see, I thought we believe in the Holy Spirit is work of the Holy Spirit, right? Salvation. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. We are only the vessel, but for God. Then another one, true case, huh? me and my wife, and then we always want to bring this girl to our church. Okay? And she attended in the English service. You are, and she is literally a very quiet or I think one hand no. And I brought her to Chinese church also. Eventually she stopped coming. You know why? The leader keep pressurizing her to serve. <laughs> she she said, No, I just want to come to worship, accept the Lord first. But she's pressurized to serve. How? So now I, I praise God that now she's attending another church lah, in Kapong. Okay, praise God for that. I see the good point. You see? So you see, you have to use the wisdom. You see, not everyone. Just because we see somebody got success in the corporate world. Somebody got this, got nice personality, got more hair than me. You know? <laughs> so we want to push him quickly into the ministry. Not so. God look at the heart, right? God don't look at the physical appearance. But I do admit that sometimes physical appearance is so very important now. Okay? It's very important now. You know? So, correct or not? Okay? And then the other one, the foolishness is a lot of people create fear for themselves. Fear, no. I talk to them. Attend too many end times talk. Talk until they attend to scare. Like, that talk, give talk, end time, also attend. Talk, give talk, end time. Talk until the wow, tribulation coming. Uh, you very scary. Uh, to store up food. Uh. I say, stop attending. Some people go into YouTube. Certain speakers will always talk about the judgment of God. Do you know that? They will talk about the judgment, 95%. Then they leave it open. And then what happened when I was last time very active in full gospel businessman, I brought this person to come and give Bible study one hour before the FGB. So I get a lot of got new comers there. Talk until everybody don't want to attend. God if not talk until the judgment of God for all talk about God is loving, God is caring. For God, no. 95% talk about the judgment of God. Well, talk until we are so scared. Uh. Like it to me, things we do wrong, uh, like we'll be judged by God. Correct is be judged by God. You know, but he forgot to bring the other aspect of God. 
You see? So I keep telling him, I said, I have to stop you. But that is his character. But you cannot ask him to change. Okay? So that's another area. Uh, one more area, especially when it comes to salvation. Be careful. Use your awareness. When anybody brings anybody to the church, or even in the party or in a home group, and this person seriously wants to talk to another person about Christ, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Don't go and say, hey, you want barley water, not Tong Sui Yo. Not important, the barley water. Correct or not? Sometimes when you see the person bring the flood to a corner to talk, hey, today Raymond Po Tong Sui Yo. You want Tong Sui or not? Interrupt the talk. Yes, this is what happened to me. Correct. I was at a group, you know, I got a lot of golfer friends, we have New Year Eve. And there was this Mr. Seal, he was very interested. I'm trying to get him. And there was in a group, uh, three of us, two, uh, me and another brother were Christian. So when talking to him, then Seal Mr. asked me, hey, Kim San, uh, this Bible, the Old Testament, New Testament, oh, then I say, why not we go to another corner here, you're all having whiskey, or after we talk all differently. Lah. You know what I mean? So I say, let's go corner. So he was talking. Talking. And this guy, brother, came with a bottle, with a can or with a bottle of whiskey. And for me, he, you know, I like Carlsberg only. He came, hey, can you two stop talking? Huh? Now the whiskey, the Carlsberg is good. Lah. I tell you, interrupt everything. I was so annoyed. You know, you know what I mean? I was so annoyed. And then after that, I tried to reach out to him. And then, you know, lah, other times, oh, cannot talk. Lah, the big group. Cannot talk. And then eventually he was diagnosed of pancreatic cancer. And I remember that I told you one time, after I play golf with you, I said I had to go and look for this brother, you know, to see him. And go and talk to him. But praise God, before he died, the son, the son with the Christian brought the pastor to come and pray and ask him to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And he has a Christian funeral. You see, but what I'm trying to say, that don't interrupt and come to certain important things. Had to use your, had to use your judgment, had to use your discernment. So sometimes that's why I say you have to keep silent. At times, don't come and offer uh, this and that. Not important, okay? So, uh, if we, so we have to, we have to learn, okay? Because it's very frustrating, especially when it comes to salvation talk. You put in so much energy and then interruption come in, you know, and talk about, hey, how's your trip to Cheng Cha Chet? Yeah? Is that important? Not important, all right? You know what I mean? We can talk other times. You see? So that's where disruption comes in and disrupt the whole thought flow processes. Okay? And under this, the other one is, I think you all know in the world of Jeremiah, the wise should not boast of their wisdom or strong of their strength nor the rich of their wealth. Anyone to boast, he should only boast about Jesus Christ. Okay? I'm talking about arrogance and Pride is something very simple. It's nothing wrong to share testimony of your successes, of your this and that, your gifting, your that. But in the way you talk, uh, if putting another person down, uh, then that becomes a pride. Okay? Uh, I attended this underworld outreach in this uh, mission conference. Sometimes we all gather from different, different countries. Malaysia, talk first, Mozambique. Uh, we all gather lah. After breakout group. But some of them have a lot of successes. But the way they talk, like only their strategy is right. You see? So it makes us feel, no? You see, actually, we could sense the lot of pride in them. You see? So you see, so it be careful. So remember that whatever success is all from the Lord. It's all from the Lord. Okay? It's all from the Lord. So for me, I always say, that it doesn't take much effort lah, to swallow your pride. That's where unforgiveness comes in. It doesn't take much effort not to throw your weight around. Hey, I'm an elder now, no. Doctor say I'm a chief elder now. Okay, <laughs> don't play play with me. Huh? <laughs> Victor, I'm a pastor now, no. You don't address me a pastor, I get very angry. <laughs> okay, you see? So remember, try not to blow your own horn too much. Just learn now. Just learn at times. Okay? But don't have false humility. Yeah? Okay? The other one is another big subject. So the last one under this area will be 
careless words. Okay? Uh, so you know that eventually Jesus said that every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it on the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified. By your words you will be condemned. Okay? Be careful of this. And all of us fall into this sometimes. Me too. Okay? Just like you saw the screen behind, very nice, right? It doesn't cost much. Only six figure. But who is doing that? Is Victor that who looked into it with Dato. After you get to know, you, I know we like to joke, but you cannot come and joke with Victor like that. Hey, Victor, you got commission. Ah. <laughs> cannot, no. It, it may be a joke, no. But it's a joke that doesn't reflect the value. You get what I mean? No? He put in the effort. You cannot come and say, hey, Pastor Vita, I'm sure you got commission. Nah. That's why you look into it, you put so much work. It doesn't reflect his value. He's hitting below the belt. Okay? Be careful. And remember that what this guy, I told you, I shared the story of my previous church where me and my wife, eventually he came and we offered uh, to uh, give him, I was a bride. Now, one time my wife, I think, has to work, go back to Segi. So I have no choice in my apartment and I went to Fasher. When I went to fashion, you know all my friends, I saw my Christian friend. You know, I say, ah, wow, Brother Kim San, I didn't know you were a girlfriend or so. How can you talk like that as a Christian to me? And that girl, I'm trying to, you know what I mean? You see, you see, you talk like that. You see, cannot lah. I, I told him, I said, you cannot talk like that. You want to joke, you cannot talk like that, you know. I'm, see, so this is doing, so some people cannot understand what is, when is serious and when is joking. You see? Uh, so, you see, they, so it's very, but be careful. So eventually, I'm somehow under the first area that always examine your behavior, okay? Always examine your proneness to despair and negativity. Last time, you know, when we went to a church in Indonesia, you know, normally the people who need prayer, they will, the pastor will put them one side, you know, one side. Then after that, I saw them, wow, very hard case lah, in the group. Before we pray, one fellow brother say, hey, wow, I think I look at them very difficult, no? cannot heal. Lah. Such thing, no? <laughs> can you believe it? You know, he say, wow, the case is very tough. I look at them also, I also say, how oh, I wish I got Lorna and Sopna around. And they You see? But, but you shouldn't speak. I mean, don't speak it. Don't speak it. You don't have the faith, don't speak. Okay? And the other one will be uh, examine your worldly pleasures, but which I won't talk about it. Lah. Okay? So now I come to the, uh, this one, I was also into it. Lah. Okay? So I had to be very careful. Lah. I don't know why my wife going to choose these three pictures. I don't cannot understand. <laughs> but I think I leave it to my wife when it comes to technology. Okay, another area is devotion to God. Very important. So I mix around, I say, hey, your name Mark, uh, you must be a Christian. Oh, how do you know? I say, your name is Mark in the Bible. Ma. He said, I didn't know so. I said, that means you don't read the Bible. La. <laughs> you right, no? I said, do you attend church? He said, no. Ah, so. You see, a lot of people, they give a lot of reasons why they want to. When you talk about devotion to God, is to stay loyal to God, loving God, and a feeling for God, despite your circumstances. But you know some of the reasons when you talk to people, you know why they don't want to attend? Uh, my parents also never attend. La. You know? Logical reason, right? My parents also never attend. Before I attend. And I, uh, I, I'm in the, the church I went, uh, they are not loving one, uh, especially the elders. The pastor not a loving one. Uh. Correct? They have, you know what I mean? So they say, Oh, the church also people sin. Uh. You never you never hear the church in Singapore, man, the blood has completed how many million? Correct? You see? You, you can hear all these things. You know what I mean? So you see, then people begin to form that into them the reason that they should not, they, they should not stay devoted already. They should not stay devoted. So you see. Oh, some of them, okay, genuine reasons. They are abused, they are abandoned because of their child, because of their childhood, because of their experiences. Okay, I can understand that. Some because of work and heavy responsibilities. Uh, 
But then I want to tell you the story of the sons of Korah. It was in chapter 16, if you read. I urge you all to read. Huh? Then when we tell you, go back and read. That's what I do. When I tell you, service, chapter that not family, go back and read. This Korah and the descendants, they were all responsible for arranging all when come, uh, when come to service, uh, all the Ark of Covenant, everything. Uh, you know, they were all supposed to do that. All the lampstand and everything, uh, the objects. Uh, when Moses they all, and Aaron moved from place to place in their journey, in the journey, uh, you know, the exodus. But then after that, what happened? This Korah, not happy, rebel. He told Moses, how come you always got all the best responsibility? We have to carry out of covenant, carry lampstand, carry this. You see? Do we have such thoughts or not in this church? <laughs> it's very dangerous. Okay, so they rebel against God. They rebel against God. Someone am I? He go and gather 250 more people to come and to come and rebel against Moses and Aaron. You know? For some of us, when we're not happy, what we do? We go and gather a few more others. Lah. <laughs> it's logical, actually, it's practical, right? You know what happened? Eventually, uh, God swallowed them up. God swallowed Korah and sent fire down, fire down to burn out the 250 rebels. God sent down. But God spared the sons of Korah. God spared no? God spared the sons of Korah. Eventually, the sons of Korah, okay, they were writers of the book of Psalms. 11 chapters. Can you imagine how God, how God not only spared them, how God used them greatly. So this story begins to show that it's very important that, you know, that I think the Bible never say what, why God spared them. But a lot of writers believe that they make a decision to stand with the Lord. They make a decision to stand with the Lord despite of their fathers. So what today I'm trying to tell you, your situation may change. Okay? You don't know how your parents eventually will turn out, your brother and sisters, or even here, some of them would, no? You don't know, you just don't know. But you must make a decision like the sons of Korah. No matter what your circumstances one day on, you must make a stand to stay devoted to God. That's what the story is all about. Okay? So it's very important. We must stand with God so that we do not have to walk in the sins of our forefathers. We do not have to walk in the sins of our forefathers. Okay? Whatever they have walked in the past, not right. But we don't have to walk in it. We must make a decision to say, God, I will stay devoted to you no matter what. So in this case, that's why you see, we stay devoted to God even by our choices. That's why when we, uh, when we play God after that, my friend will ask me, but, uh, he said, Kim San, how come you only support Republican? I say, yeah, there are certain things I don't agree with Republican, especially some of the president, you know, <laughs> okay? Well, I say, I cannot accept Democrat. I'm a Christian. He say, why? They are pro-choice, pro-transgender, pro-abortion, okay? And I said, can you imagine if I support huh? pro-abortion, right? And I come to church, I pray, oh, Jesus love the little children. Can you see the contradict? Can you see or not? So we are Christians. You know, then now, worse still, you go and you are, you are mis school uh, preschool teacher or children ministry, teach the children, Jesus love the little children. You see, you cannot. So we're staying devoted to God by making certain decisions. Huh? There cannot be pro-choice. The choice must be of God. The choice must not contradict the truth of God. Okay? Very important that we are. So that's why I urge you, you want to stay devoted to God, you must learn to say no to certain beliefs. Okay? Uh, you're still reading about Feng Shui. Stop. 
You know what I mean? You are still reading about horoscope, stop. Okay, all these things, tabole. Cannot. Our source of blessing is only from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So that's how you want to stay devoted to God. Okay? But you may not, you may still make mistakes along the way, but keep examining. Keep examining. Very important. So like this couple friend, like we have lunch, she told me they went to China. They say, is it okay to go uh, to the temple? I say, you can, you don't go in. But I say, you have no choice. Sometimes the temple, you, you have to go through, and then the bus is waiting the other side, right? you have no choice. I say, just go through, but don't take pictures. Lah. He say, why? I say, you take pictures, you show your friend, who are you glorifying? You're glorifying God, or you're glorifying their, their God? Very simple. So I told them, don't take pictures. Okay? But just go through. Don't need to worry about all this spiritual attack. Lah. I say, oh, we have the blood of Christ to cover us. Greater is he who is in us than huh, those in the world. Why are we so worried? I mean, why are we so worried? We have to show to the non-Christians that we are Christians. We have the strength. We have the blood to cover us. Some of us see the statues so scared already. I mean, they are all dead words. Lah. I mean, no power cannot... So why are we worried? Okay, remember that. So learn to say no. Very important. Okay? So, and the last one that I want to tell about this is the uh, numbers. Uh, so I hope that you all will go back to read. You see, at the end of it, Numbers 26, they put the word, Nevertheless, the children of Korah did not die. Before that, they were telling about you know, how God sent fire down to devour the 250 people and, you know, and God opened up the ground to swallow Korah to rebel. Okay, so very important. So the last one, I think is the one of the most important one. You have this, uh, Summa Kautim. Okay, yes. Summa Kautim. You must have this. Uh, sorry. Uh. Ah, okay. So under, we should have courage to stand with God. So this one, I don't have to. Okay, let's hear the conclusion. This is what Ecclesiastes, what the King Solomon say. Let's fear God and keep his commandment. Okay? And I tell you what happened. Like I think I told Dato, I checked on you, it's authentic. There was this mission agency in Klang. They received five, six million dollars no, from overseas for the work among the least rich people group in the 1040 window. 1040 window. Lah. Okay, very poor. Very poor. So the work is supposed to be for there, to, for the missionaries and everything. Oh. And these people, they are very nice people, especially the Dutch people. You know? They are very nice. They don't come and check one. No. They don't come and check. And I tell you, eventually, uh, the person who handled the accounts uh, and the manager, they wall out the money. And the lady could buy a house in Desapa City, you know, 1.6 million. Can you imagine that? And no action can be taken at any time. After I, you know, the one I won't tell you, lah. Okay. You see, they, they, they want to make a report. They threaten them. They say that you tell us, we will tell. Us. We will tell this and tell that. What you are doing? You see. So you see, but what I'm trying to say that. These people uh, don't have the fear of the Lord. No. Don't have the fear. Don't have the fear. Just because they store the opportunity there, they just take. But there's no fear of the Lord. So we must have this, this fear. We must have this. Once you have this fear, then everything, like I say, is in place. Okay? So, but, but what we have? We have fear of men. We have fear of men no, instead of fearing of the Lord. Last time, if you want to talk to me, I say, go and talk to Dato. La. Yo, Dato, I don't want to talk. La. You say, why? I say, he's okay. Go and talk to him. I say, it's a good, a good issue. Go and talk to him. He can make decision. I cannot make. You say, but they won't. So you see, it's a fear of man. But we should have the fear of the Lord, most importantly. Okay? Because what the fear of the Lord means, that means we give God the reverence. We give God the genuine reverence. We give God the respect. The respect, very important. Okay? Because we need to appreciate his character. Okay? 
Because what is the truth that we have? He is loving, He is merciful, He is forgiving. But remember, He is also holy, just and righteous. He is, he is also dead. It cannot be all one side only. Right? Then there is, there is always a parameter when we are given a choice. There is always a responsibility. You see? So, but that's so what you have to do. Okay? Since he's always aware of our action, our motives, good, both good and bad. So we have to honor him of a God of great glory, majesty, purity, and power. Because why? He is also angry with sin. He is not happy with sin. Okay? So at the end of it, like I say again, Okay, we will be held accountable for those actions, but fear not, okay? Because blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delights in his commands. Okay? That is our God. We don't have we, we fear him, but we don't have to fear him until that, you know, that that he is uh, that he only judges us, wanna punish us. He's loving. Because for those who fear God, you keep His commandment and you conform to His instruction. Blessings will come. Okay? Come. Let's pray. Yes, Lord. Today, Lord, your message has been spoken. We thank you, Lord, for open hearts, open minds. But Lord, we know we are weak, but you are strong, Lord. So today, we ask you, Lord, that you will send your Holy Spirit, the power of from above us to change us, Lord, to have a changed heart, to have a changed heart, Lord. But most importantly, Lord, that to help us, Lord, to examine ourselves. Sometimes we don't know how to examine. Sometimes we don't know what goes wrong. Sometimes we can't find out what, what is wrong with us. Lord, come and reveal to us. Come and help us to discern. Sometimes what is it that you want us to improve? What, so that our walk will glorify you. So that our walk will bring about harmony, will bring about unity, will bring about joy, will bring about peace, will bring about walking right with you. But eventually, most importantly, Lord, is your will and your purpose. Is your will and your purpose for each of us as your children in this church that you have placed us, you have placed us in this nation. It's your will and your purpose that is most important to us, Lord. So we want, truly want to give you all the praise. We truly want to give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we ask. Amen.